The more I analyze this game, the more I think it might be the greatest masterpiece of a game that I've ever encountered. It sees your existential dread and it raises you a way through it. Games aren't certified therapy, but this game is probably as close as it gets. Take that, video game haters. Hi, I'm Mad Curious. Welcome to my journey in how to spell Requiem. I mean, let's break down the ending to A Plague Tale Requiem and how it answers one of life's biggest questions. This is the first analysis I've done where my entire perspective of the game shifted during it, which I will explain in detail in this video. The amount of depth that this game has, it's definitely a game with replayability. You saw the statement on the thumbnail, overcoming fear. But let's break down how we get there and how it's important to the end of the game, which for some reason, I've hardly found any analyses for in either video or article format. There are plenty of reviews, but not nearly enough people interpreting the depth within this game. How is A Plague Tale still a hidden gem? Before I go any further, this video will contain spoilers for both A Plague Tale games. And if there are any games I suggest not getting spoiled, it is these. Also, please know that I might pluralize A Plague Tale to A Plague's Tale I've called it that since the beginning and I'm trying to stop. I keep saying a plague's tale as though it's two. Spoilers in three, two, one. That wasn't the right direction. The ending can be a bit confusing if you don't take the time to analyze all of the different components. Why can't Amicia save Hugo? Why are the birds back? Why do we have to submit to the supernatural squeaky boys? To answer all of these questions, I started by trying to find the thematic framework. I didn't find the main theme for this story to be immediately obvious. If it was to you, comment below so I know to think harder next time. So I did some digging on external context for the game and then broke down the various story elements, title, characterization, literary device, and the synergy between these story elements and the game elements until the theme became apparent. Quick summary of the game. Amicia and company have lived peacefully for six months, but defeating those who wanted to use Hugo as a weapon didn't actually fix their main problem, that Hugo is still sick. He still has episodes and they don't know how to keep him safe. So they seek out someone who may be able to help. As they journey for help, they discover that not everyone has been as safe as they have. The rats are still spreading the plague. The game follows their journey to try to cure Hugo and stop the plague. Now, rewatch the indecision with me and Amicia struggle with it so that we can start breaking it down. All right. What now? Hugo, where are you? Are you ready now to save everything? Only you can stop me. In the end, we fail. A Plague Tale is a story about a hero failing. This subverts expectations to prove a point. Now keep that in the back of your mind, that this point is related to control. We'll come back to it. Let's keep moving towards that point with context. Like I said before, there wasn't much else out there discussing the point, themes, or moral of the story. And the only article I found about it interpreted it as symbolism for climate change. It was intriguing, though I don't see any direct connection or indication that this is in any way true. Many reviews even mentioned how deep the themes were, but never once mentioned what they were, which is generally not something included in reviews as that's not the purpose of them. But still, I was at a loss. With how strongly this game made me feel, I knew there was something there. So I dug further. The developer, Asobo Studios, markets the game as on an intense new quest for hope. So the story's meaning surrounds hope. Interesting. Now that we have a direction, let's analyze the game a bit more and see if we can figure out what it's trying to say about hope. I initially felt really, really sad at the end of this game. And that may be where some players leave it for themselves, but there's more, so much more to this game. The game evoked an emotion which the best story games do. However, I'm so sorry, even though I was quite sad, for those who haven't ever seen my live streams, we do a lot of joking. And I had been joking about the Hugo problem for a while. He was killing hundreds, maybe thousands of people. And he wasn't particularly to me, let's say, Ellie level. I'm not gonna finish that thought, but I know some of you know what I mean, right? I thought it was a fair ask, but of course Amicia's goal is to save her brother. So my frame of mind was not in the same frame of mind as the main characters, which lent to a more or less incorrect direction with my original assumptions. Innocent selfishness. 
I'd thought that Amicia's journey was inherently selfish, and I'd thought it was this way because she was a child. I'd thought maybe the creators were trying to say something about innocence and acting upon misconceptions, but as we know, the mom's idea to follow the order's way to just lock Hugo up until he passed didn't appear to be a great option either. So my original idea didn't have much backing after that, and I begun to dig into the hope thematic thread. I started with the title of the game, both of them. You see, even though my thumbnail actually included the word innocence, that wasn't exactly based on the first game. Just my gut reaction for a direction to start with. In the first game, not only do they not know the significance of Hugo's sickness or anything related to it, but the children are innocent. In the second game, Amicia is more of a killer and she struggles with that. I'm just not very good at being human. You are. This is why you have doubts. The second game's title is a plague tale requiem. Requiem is by definition, an act or token of remembrance, especially in observance to the dead. You see the word requiem insinuates that the opposite of innocence has occurred, that something has become known and that something has also been lost, an act or token of remembrance. And the final chapter after our last playable decision is titled Legacy of her family, and she's the last of her family that can act in remembrance of the rest. This is highlighted by the fact that she seems more at peace. They don't show her struggling anymore with panic attacks, even though her worst fears have been realized. She's lost her entire family after fighting with everything she had to save them. This thought process naturally led me into diving deeper into Amicia's characterization. Amicia faces two emotional hurdles throughout the game, especially in Requiem, considering what she went through in the first game. The first, authority. Kneel to no lord, Sophia. No count, no king, no one. I only care about him. All right, I had enough there. This scene suggests where Amicia's issues with authority actually stem from a desire for control and power. Remember when I said that subverting expectations was to prove a point on control? Let's keep going. Amicia's second emotional hurdle is debilitating fear. Amicia is under extreme stress, and it's always refreshing to see a game show the toll that that level of stress would take on someone. I can't. I can't. Please! Amicia, quick! I can't. Amicia! Both of these hurdles are addressed in the ending of the game, and believe it or not, help explain it. Let's work backwards with the hurdle of fear for a moment. There are actually two endings in this game. You have the choice to kill Hugo yourself, or if you hesitate long enough, Lucas will do it for you. This changes this specific section of dialogue. Our alchemist coming. Lucas. Oh, no. <sighs> He's still on the road, studying. All by himself. We grew up so fast. He needed this. There's an added few lines about how Amicia can still picture Lucas killing Hugo, and she can't handle it. This suggests something important. There was no way out. But if Lucas has to make the sacrifice to end it instead of Amicia, it causes additional suffering for her. Now this is where my perspective started to shift. Amicia has overcome her panic at the end of the game. She's overcome her debilitating fear in the last few months since she last saw Sophia. How and why? This can be answered through gameplay synergies. I don't know what the term for this is or if there even is one, but a Plague Tale basically does whatever is the opposite of ludonarrative dissonance. It's the epitome of telling a story through gameplay by reinforcing the messages it wants to convey through what we're doing in the game. My favorite example of this is naturally at the end of the game and is a literary device. When Amicia makes it through the waves of rats to find Hugo, she sees a bird and she recognizes it from before. You might choose to follow them as I did, but think back to what actually happened with the initial statues of the birds. Interestingly, the birds are phoenixes, which are a mythical bird known to symbolize immortality and rebirth. When we saw the birds within the game, they pointed toward a specific hope, the island that Hugo dreams about that they chase after for half the story is basically all a lie. This community believed that the child that had the macula the same as Hugo does was a god and they worshiped him and made rituals. But that was a lie made up after the real story where they had locked the other child away and he died. The Count made up a story with the Phoenixes representing rebirth with rituals and worship of the child to try to actually give his wife hope so she could live through her trauma. Hope can be beautiful, but if it's based on a lie, it's all 
an illusion. We can choose to follow the birds in the end, but Hugo makes it clear that this too would be a lie and that it's a lie Amicia made up to protect herself, to protect herself from her fear of losing Hugo. When she asks about the birds, Hugo says, They're showing the way, aren't they? We tried that way, Amicia, and it was a lie. Yes, that's it, I think. I'll keep going. What's happening to me? I feel... I know you're lost and scared. There's the fear again. We give ourselves lies of hope in order to not move forward because we're scared. There are actually studies claiming that hope and fear are two sides of the same coin. They're both motivators, one towards something desired and one away from something not desired. I found an article that cites a study on hope. I'll reference it in a link in the description. In relation to hope and fear, they say this, they are both felt where meaningful consequences require action from the individual, yet where total control of the outcome is not possible. Action without total control. Remember Amicia's emotional hurdles, debilitating fear and authority because of lack of control. Amicia's true struggle is with hope. She chooses lying to herself rather than having acceptance. And the message in this moment is that acceptance is the key to moving forward. The phoenixes symbolize the lie. So to solve the puzzle, we must move away from the lie and move away from the phoenix. This is further amplified through the gameplay during the scene after we solve this bird puzzle. Amicia fights to have control over the rats, fights out of fear of losing Hugo, fights for the hope of saving him. Amicia is acting out of fear, not accepting the truth, taking hope too far when the only hope left is a lie. I surrender. I'm tired of all this. We finally found the theme. We overcome fear by choosing to surrender hope. So let's sum this ending up all together now. Hope and fear are inextricably linked and require action, but without full control over the outcome. The lack of control can give us pause. How do we live a hopeful life if in all hope, there's also fear? Hope has been pondered by many a philosopher and writer, and this game presents some of the best of these thoughts in both story and gameplay in a harmonious and powerful way. Our main character is Amicia, so in analyzing hope in relation to her, this is actually perfect. She continues to have hope in the face of all struggles, even after she fails at saving her own brother and after accepting that truth. Amicia is not out for revenge. She's not out for numbing her pain. And it's not suggested that she's still having the panic attacks she was having during the traumatic events taking place when fear overwhelmed her. The end of this game sees her more or less at peace and embarking on a journey to try and help the next carrier and protector. And in her words, show them the path. This is obviously a very nuanced topic and the game isn't suggesting letting go of all hope and fear all of the time. Yet it is suggesting that we can't have one without the other. And if we're going to stop the extremes of fear, we must also let go of the extremes of hope. Only then, when we relinquish our control in relation to the two, can we take action. We've gotten to our point, but we haven't quite discussed the entire ending of this game yet, have we? And that was the promise in the title. So let me give you a little bonus that isn't directly related to our main premise, but analyzes the last bit of the ending. But first, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, know that I have so much more to come and every single like and subscribe helps me to continue making these. I also have a Patreon if you want even more of my creations. We've gone over so much depth in just the ending and the main theme of A Plague Tale, but there is so much more in this game that I didn't even touch on even more characters that feel alive. I have a feeling this game and studio will only continue to grow. I hope to have even more reasons to revisit the series in the future, whether because of another sequel or an adaptation, even though I think there could be nothing as powerful as the way they've built this story as a game. A Plague Tale is a masterpiece. So let's break down the very end, shall we? This scene indicates that the macula has been reborn and the sound effects would indicate that the new carrier is in a hospital in the modern day. Is this a hint at another game in the future? Possibly. It at least leaves the door wide open. The one thing it does tell us is that even if Amicia helped other carriers and protectors throughout the time between the Hundred Years War and now, no one has defeated the plague. Wait, we're not done yet. What are these birds representing? It's interesting that the mythical bird, the phoenix, was a literary device so integral to the story. And the very end of the game shows real birds at Hugo's grave. I'm not sure what exactly the significance is, but for now, I'll accept Amicia's interpretation. 
not of hope, but of acknowledgement.